we are going to talk about stability today this is a topic that i have spoken about a lot many times in different videos but i thought it's very important that i speak about a few points that i have not attended before engineers especially the career starting engineers often thinks that strength is the most important aspect and they keep focusing on strength aspects detailing aspects and more significantly on software like etabs and stat in this process they forget about the important stability is for buildings and for structures and give a lot of emphasis on other stuffs which are lesser important hi all this is premjit here from civilera.com let's discuss about stability today so we have discussed many times about overturning in previous videos if you have been following me for a long time so let me switch from overturning which is of course important to something different first and then come back to overturning overturning is one of the main things so let me talk about frame action or lack of it which can create an instability case so now in the picture you can see a frame building and generally a framed rc building is intact and it has a frame action and then it is stable because of the frame action so now let us talk about a building which has probably a precast structure and you have say a column here and a few columns here in a repetitive manner so i will explain that to you in a uh, while what i'm talking about so let us assume that you have beams here and all these are precast and a dry joint or a slotted joint so in such a case what you would end up is something like this you have a slot and on the slot you are going to rest your beam or the slab so this is the column so if this is your case if this is your structure then you have a uh, lack of frame action here your slab is resting here it's a kind of simply supported system and when you have a lateral load you are sure to have instability here there are chances even that when the deflections are more you have a failure or you have a case where your slabs are going to be down because of the lack of frame action this is not monolithic and it is not possible that you can do such a system in a seismic region like india so what do we do so in case if you want to go for this either it has to be a framed structure itself with a wedge joint which which i mean is going to be monolithic or you will have to introduce bracing in the form of shear wall so maybe you have a strong shear wall here which you are going to provide which is also going to take the entire lateral load and you are going to relieve the other columns and the structure from the lateral load so you can do that so if you are dumping the entire one so it will become a single system where entire load is going to be passed on to your shear wall and then you are relieving the other columns from the lateral load and it's going to be designed only for gravity so if that's possible that's done that is the end of it and if you don't have that possibility then your structure is not stable so this is what i wanted to point out same thing with steel structure so if you have a frame and then you have a pinned connection here most of the cases it will be like that the code close if you read tells that you need to have a bracing that is something like this to pass on the load onto the foundation so what happens is when you have a lateral load the loads are going to get passed onto the foundation through the bracing so lack of it means that you have instability in your structure so you need to take care of your stability this time the frame action if you don't have a frame action you should have some sort of bracing it could be shear wall it could be a bracing like this for a steel structure and things like that so that's about the frame action now lateral sway that is something which we know but then we may not know that as a stability issue for example under wind load the code tells you only to have a deflection of h by 500 and if you are exceeding height by 500 then you have a classic case of instability so if you have a building like this and if you have multiple floors let it be any number of floors and if your total height is h and if you have a deflection of more than h here say if you have something like this and if this delta is more than height by 500 then you have instability now how do you control that there are various methods if your columns are oriented in this manner you may have to orient it in 
this manner and check so that you have more inertia towards that direction and you have better stability. It could be that if there is a possibility you add one more column here so that the deflections are under control. It could be that if there is a possibility increase your column size that will control deflection and another possibility is that add a shear wall in the building and your sway or your deflection comes down. So these are all things that you need to look holistically in the scheming not just stand alone and take a decision it depends on your scheme. So a good scheme of the building is very important for controlling deflection. Same case deflection due to seismic forces it's called seismic drift that we have to check. It's nothing but deflections or difference of deflection. Say for example if you have delta 1 here and delta 2 here and delta 3 here code says that delta 3 minus delta 2 should not be more than height of the floor by 250. Here it's the floor. So if this is h, this is h, this is h. It's not the total height. In the case of wind it's the total height and in case of seismic it is the floor height by 250 which is the limit. Your deflection, what you get from your analysis actual deflection should not be more than this value so you need to limit it to that drift for seismic and deflection for wind all these aspects are mentioned in 20.1 in is 456 as usual i request you to read the blog in addition to seeing this video because most of the things that i'm explaining in video is short and to the point if you want more information you have to read my blog as well. Load variation in a building is also very important and this is mostly during construction times that it can lead to stability issues. So one example is that you have even 0.9 dl plus wind load or earthquake load in your analysis plugged in this is to ensure stability but there can be some local stability issues especially for lintels and all where you have to give more emphasis during construction because there could be that you have a lintel structure or some structure which needs a stability which is a cantilever structure say you have a cantilevering lintel and and say you have the balancing moment due to a wall here there could be situations that you are removing the formwork before raising this wall things like that there could be situations that you are plastering on one side first say for example you plaster only here you are not plastering here so there is a load variation there could be that during construction you are storing a lot of things on the cantilever side generally it should not be done but sometimes that do happen and you have to either restrict that or you have to take care of that load variation in site in the actual site in your design when you attend to your details when you attend to your stability checks you need to ensure that you are taking care of all these load variations. I have given a link to a course in this video description and also in the blog. Please visit that course which is a free course and you will be learning more about these kind of local instabilities. So I recommend you do that. I also want to explain sliding as an instability but in general cases in buildings sliding won't become a instability issue because your building dead, dead weight is not so less so that the building slides away due to lateral loads but this can occur in a freestanding retaining wall so for example if you have a retaining wall which is freestanding something like this and if you have a lot of lateral load you have a fill on the other side complete fill in such a situation there are chances that you have a sliding of this so how do you control the sliding you can read a good textbook on design of retaining wall it would surely tell you how to do that but generally I can just tell you that increasing the base dimension of this will help you on this side say you have full load here so if there is any kind of possibility to fill here and balance some of the load then that also will help you then increasing the thickness increasing the thickness all these are going to increase the self mass of the retaining wall and thereby stabilizing it another option is to have a shear key all this will be there in your textbooks you can read that and understand so shear key is nothing but an extension of your stem to the soil so that you have additional frictional resistance from this so that the retaining wall doesn't slide away 
and as I have mentioned in the blog, in many cases in apartments and all that, you have retaining wall at the boundary of your structure and then you will have a driveway or something and your roof slabs are going to be connected to your main building. So if this is the case, so if you have a main building here and it's here that you have the retention, then your retaining wall is not going to slide. Same way in many situations, you might have a connectivity with your main building column. So in case if you have a retaining wall, something like this, you generally have a great slab and that great slab will be connected to your main building. And because of that, you will not have sliding in your retaining wall. And in many situations, your retaining wall will be tucked inside the periphery and connected to the columns. And in such cases also, you will not have any kind of sliding. Say for example, you have columns like this and all the retaining wall and columns are interconnected and are monolithic. So in this situation, your retaining wall will act more as a slab rather than a freestanding retaining wall. So if I draw its elevation, you have column here, you have your plinth beam at the bottom here and then you have your roof beam and you have the second column here and so on. So if this is the case, then your slab, here you have the retention and this is going to act like a slab and your loads are going to get transferred onto the columns and the beams like a panel. So you don't have the risk of sliding in this case either. So all these understanding are very important for you to take decisions on stability of buildings and structures. So please focus on all these. And lastly, coming to overturning. And there are various reasons that a building can overturn. One is when you have a very slender building. So if you have a very slender, a tall building, but its base dimensions are very small. So if this is the case, then definitely when you have a lateral load, you will have an uplift on one side because you have a very slender structure, especially when the dead loads are also going to be lesser you will have this situation where you have an uplift on one side because of the wind or seismic. So you need to take care of this in your analysis and then be sure that you don't have instability or overturning. Now, same thing can happen when you excavate near an existing building. So this is something which we often see in cities like Bangalore or anywhere in India where you have an existing building and you come very close to it. People are greedy and want to save the land price and they come too close and then do a vertical excavation either for a basement or even for foundation. So this can create a kind of instability and the existing building can have issues. Same way many times people deviate and build very close to canals and nalas and things like that and then put the building into trouble. So all these are situations that you need to avoid and you need to engineer buildings, consult geotechnical engineers and then take decisions. Same is the case when you when you build something near a building which has basement. It's the opposite case of what we told now. Here it was excavation second and the building was existing. I'm talking about a situation where you already have a building and you are having this building here and then you are doing a high-rise building nearby that without leaving enough distances. So the surcharge acting here can come in your way and then put the basement into trouble. So all this needs to be taken care of. If you stick to the building rules, it's unlikely that you will have issues like these. And in many cases, if you don't do a building with proper soil investigation, there are chances of differential settlements and you can get cases like this where your building is going to settle on one side and sway towards the other and it can even create strength issues as well. One is it can create overturning. Second thing is that the columns on this side, if ever this is a building with columns, it can get more stress because it's swaying. So that can also happen and can have strength issues as well. Now there are also a lot of cases where you need to be aware of local members overturning. I suggest you to read and also do the free course that I'm having in the description and in the comment and also in the blog. So please read and go through that free course on stability to understand local member overturning as well. 
So I hope this video is helping you and the free course will help you to understand a bit more on stability issues and how to mitigate problems that can arise due to stability issues. So thank you for watching and we will see soon in a different video next week.